Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild, Part 28. This is refitting the column and the entablature. And people are saying that entablature is the name of the horseshoe-shaped piece that fits to the column. Entablature. These are the four original bolts that held the column onto the bed plate. And I'm going to reuse these bolts to bolt the column to the bed plate. But before that, I need to remove some excess paint that's got onto the metal part of the, wait for it, entablature, the horseshoe-shaped bit. As I mentioned in a previous episode, I just didn't want to paint everything in Crimson Lake. That's the LMS red paint. I need to have some of the parts left in bare metal. And I'm sure you will agree that the combination of Crimson Lake paint and some unpainted cast iron looks quite good. Not forgetting, of course, the steel parts and the gunmetal parts. In my opinion, if you want to make the model look really good, do not paint everything. Otherwise you may as well just get a bucket of paint and drop the whole thing in there and hang it up to dry. During the time it's taken to paint this engine, and believe me, it has taken a long, long time, I have had one or two near mental breakdowns. So I picked up the phone and phoned one of these organisations who help you in such circumstances, but all they did was send me more paintbrushes, and one of them even suggested jumping off a high public building. But now, as the painting extravaganza draws to its inevitable conclusion, it's actually looking quite good. I'm now putting a bolt into the bottom of the column to hold it to the main bed plate. It's quite important at this stage not to tighten these bolts. I need the side plate on the column, so that I can make sure that the beam is perfectly aligned with the piston rod. And in order to do this, I need to temporarily mount the beam. So here I'm fixing the bearings to the top of the column, and it's easy to see which way around they were originally because they only tend to fit one way around. In this clip, I'm fitting some stainless steel washers to the studs so that when I tighten the nuts that hold the bearing block to the column, the nuts will not screw up the paint. A quick mention as usual not to over tighten these small nuts and bolts because if you shear them off, it's really not good fun putting the problem right. So after oiling the bearings and oiling the top of the cross shaft, I can fit the top caps and check the position of the main beam relative to the cylinder. Don't forget the column is still loose, so it will allow me some adjustment as you can see here. The camera angle is not quite good here, I must admit that, and I do apologise. It looks like the parallel motion cross shaft is miles out, but in reality it isn't. In this clip, I'm fitting the small parts that hold the Watts parallel motion solid to the entablature. And like most of the parts on this engine, they're very well machined. These are very small parts, but quite fiddly to make. And once these two small fixing points are in the correct position, and I lift the piston rod to the top of its stroke, and sit the beam up against the piston rod, as you can see, the alignment is much better than it was originally. If you wish to compare it, go back to video number one. For me, it's good to see things are starting to line up, although don't forget the column is still loose, and to be honest, the beam is not precisely in the right position yet. But it's getting there. That's it for now. It's starting to take shape. No painting in this episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.